passed away this week. It's, uh, Cecil and two of his daughters are here this morning and we're glad to see them, but we're, our hearts go out to you in the passing of Sandra. Do we have other, any other announcements? That I'm for, okay, we have the cards for the children, which are due on the 10th, the 10th of December. Um, and so we appreciate all that you do for getting the gifts for, for our children that we adopt for, for Christmas. And um, I'm just thankful. I'm thankful to be here this morning. I'm thankful that all of you are here and worshiping with us this morning. As we gather in this place, we need to remember that we are loved by God and we are given so many gifts to be used to help others. Do not be afraid to use those gifts. God is with you, continually blessing you and the gifts in your service. Would you stand, if you're able, and join me in the call to worship. We lift our eyes to the Lord. We raise our voices in song and speech. We raise our voices in prayer and praise. Lord, hear our prayers. Accept our praise. Lord, open our hearts to receive your blessings of peace. Would you join me now in hymn number 131, We Gather Together. <laughs>
join me in our opening prayer. Awesome God, you created the world and all that is in us. You blessed each element of creation with your love. You called us from slavery into witness and service. Be with us this day as we gather to worship. Clear our minds of all the distractions which would draw us away from you. Open our hearts and spirits and let your healing and empowering love flow in. Prepare us to be witnesses to your power and love as we use the gifts with which you have blessed us in your service. For we offer this prayer in the name of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Would you join? 
Our scripture reading today comes from 2 Corinthians 9, verses 6 through 15. Hear now the word of the Lord. What I mean is this, the one who sows a small number of seeds will also reap a small crop, and the one who sows a generous amount of seeds will also reap a generous crop. Everyone should give whatever they have decided in their heart. They shouldn't give with hesitation or because of pressure. God loves a cheerful giver. God has the power to provide you with more than enough of every kind of grace. That way you will have everything you need always and in everything to provide more than enough for every kind of good work. As it is written, he scattered everywhere. He gave to the needy. His righteousness remains forever. The one who supplies seed for planting and bread for eating will supply and multiply your seed and will increase your crop, which is righteousness. You will be made rich in every way so that you can be generous in every way. Such generosity produces thanksgiving to God through us. Your ministry of this service to God's people isn't only fully meeting their needs, but it is also multiplying in many expressions of thanksgiving to God. They will give honor to God for your obedience to your confession of Christ's gospel. They will do this because this service provides evidence of your obedience and because of your generosity in sharing with them and with everyone. They will also pray for you and they will care deeply for you because of the outstanding grace that God has given you Thank God for his gift that words can't describe. And our second scripture is from Luke 17, verses 11 through 19. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. As he entered a village, ten men with skin diseases approached. Keeping their distance from him, they raised their voices and said, Jesus, show us mercy. When Jesus saw them, he said, go, show yourself to the priest. As they left, they were cleansed. One of them, when he saw that he had been healed, returned and praised God with a loud voice. He fell on his face at Jesus' feet and thanked him. He was a Samaritan. Jesus replied, weren't ten cleansed? Where are the other nine? No one returned to praise God except this foreigner. Then Jesus said to him, get up and go. Your faith has healed you. Thanks be to God for his holy word. When I was growing up, my mom always insisted that I write thank you notes. Now, I'm not always good at that. In fact, sometimes when I get a thank you note from some, for a gift for something I just gave somebody, it's like, wow, they were really on top of it. But it's a practice that I think in our day and age is not something that we do a lot. I know I've told you many times, I do love to get a personal note in the mail. And that's a dying art. We connect with people online. We connect with people via phone, via text. My nephew, who used to really be good at thank you notes because his mother insisted, 
now texts me a thank you note. And it's just not the same. But how do you think God feels when he blesses us in so many ways and we don't ever say thank you? Thank you for those little things that we just take for granted. Like the girl that Earl mentioned to me one time about being thankful for bread. If I went around the congregation, and I'm not going to do that today, trust me, but if I went around the congregation and I asked you all to say thank, thank you to God for something that nobody else had mentioned yet, by the time we got to the back of the room, would we be out of things to thank God for? I don't think so. I think there are so many things that we can be thankful for. Sometimes our circumstances can get in the way of feeling thankful, though, can't they? Sometimes it's just difficult. Difficult for us to, to say thank you. And I think that's what happened in the scripture that I read about the 10 people that had a skin disease. We sort of assume it was leprosy. It could have been something like that. Thankfully, that's not something that we see a lot of today. But those men said to Jesus, Jesus, show us your mercy. And what did Jesus say to them? Jesus said, go and show yourselves to the priests. As they left, they were cleansed. But only one, only one whose life had been turned around, who would be able to go back and have meals with his family again, only one came back to say thank you to, to Jesus. And when he did, Jesus replied, weren't 10 cleansed? Where are the other nine? No one returned to praise God except this Samaritan. And Jesus said, get up and go. Your faith has healed you. How many times do we forget to say thank you? Not only to those around us, but to our God in heaven, how often do we forget to say thank you for all that God has done for us? Like I mentioned, the sun coming in the windows today, to me, is something to be thankful for. But also, I'm thankful that each one of you are here in worship this morning. I do have to tell you a little bit of a secret. Have I I've told you probably in the past that Earl is the king of specific prayer. So if you haven't come to church in a while and you feel an urge to come to church, Earl's been praying for you. Because the last several weeks, he has prayed specifically for certain people and they've been in church. Now, I'm not discounting those of you who are very faithful, but if you're ever feeling that you need to come to church, Earl's, Earl's prayers are probably behind that. And I'm thankful that he does that. But, like I said, I'm thankful for each one of you. I'm thankful for those of you that I've known your whole lives. Jagger and Ryan and Chase and Brianna. I've known you since you were babies. And I'm thankful for that. Several of you, several of the children I've baptized at this church. And I'm thankful for that. And I'm just thankful that we have this place to worship, this wonderful church that we sometimes take for granted. But it's a beautiful place to come to worship our wonderful God in heaven. Sometimes it's hard, though. Sometimes it's hard when we're going through difficult times to say thank you to God. Sometimes when somebody in our family is sick or when somebody in our family has passed away, it's hard to say thank you. 
but how can we give ourselves a thankful heart and not be like nine of those lepers who just turned and probably after they showed themselves to the priest, probably went home to hug their families because they hadn't been able to do that in we don't know how long. <coughs> so as my mother would have said, what about the thank you notes? They got caught up in getting back to their families. They got caught up in circumstances around them. They got caught up in what was right in front of them and didn't go back to thank Jesus. And sometimes I think that people that don't have a lot may be the ones that are the ones that are the most thankful. Can you imagine if you went out a, went on a mission trip to a town that was very poor. If you went on a mission trip to a town that you were basically trying to help them on the ground level and the better <coughs> lives for themselves, those people would be so thankful for that. Thankful for things that sometimes we don't even consider. I'm thankful that each one of you was able to come today, that you had a vehicle that you were able to, to get here this morning. I'm thankful that you all got here safely. I'm <coughs> thankful that the three of us got here from Huntsville without having any deer run in front of us. I didn't check with Ed. You didn't have any deer run? Not Okay, good. Because sometimes that is a concern. Between Huntsville and here, there are deer. <coughs> but how many things? So. I'm, I'm going to challenge you, and my kids tease me that I I do love little notebooks. I, this is I'm not going to. I just want to show you the kind that I love, but I love little notebooks like this. You know the kind you can put in your purse. Now I have notebooks for all different different things. There's one I take to doctor's appointments so that I don't forget to ask a question. There's another one that I just write notes to myself about things I don't want to forget. But I think we would all do well if we found a little notebook and we started putting things that we're grateful in in that notebook. What would we start with? And by the end of a month, how deep would we have got? How deep would we have gotten? as far as those things that we're grateful for and we're thankful for. I think we need to celebrate, celebrate life as a gift. And we can certainly learn to express our gratitude. Think about some of the things like, what about if you were given a piece of fruit that was in season? What if it was the first orange that that you ate of the year. Doesn't that taste extra good? Because maybe you haven't had one in a while. And I know in, in this day and age, we have seasonal fruit all year long, but when you taste something particularly good, what if we said a prayer like, blessed are you, Lord our God who has kept us alive, sustained us, and brought us to this season. There was an example given of being thankful for, for thunder. In our house, we are not particularly thankful for thunder, I'm afraid, because our dog is afraid of it. So if it thunders, and especially during the night, that, there goes our good night's sleep. But if we said thank you when we heard thunder, instead of concentrating on the dog and his issues, we could say, blessed are you, Lord, our God, whose strength and power fills the universe. What if we saw something exceedingly beautiful and just said thank you to God for putting that in our universe? 
sometimes we find it hard to express thanks in prayer. When I asked for joys and concerns, and I noticed it happened this morning, when I asked for joys and concerns, many times we go right from joys into concerns. We don't, maybe I should change that. Maybe I should change that to say prayers of thanksgiving. What are we thankful for? And you know, I, I'm sure you all know that I love Thanksgiving. I love Thanksgiving. I always tell you that I think it gets a bum rap between Halloween and Christmas. But I love Thanksgiving. I love the fact that Earl and I will, will be traveling to see our daughter in Massachusetts for the holiday. I'm thankful for that. But I invite you to maybe consider writing down what you're thankful for. Write down something every day. Maybe write down three every day and keep doing it for a month and see what kinds of things you can be thankful for, even in the darkest times of our lives. God calls us to be thankful, and we don't want to be like those nine lepers who were healed by God. They were healed by God but didn't come back to say thank you. Our God is an amazing, powerful God. Things may not always go exactly as we had hoped they would, but maintaining a thankful heart in an age where we just don't stop to say thank you enough be a very good thing. If before we put our heads on our pillows at night, if we could say thank you God for this day and all that it has brought us, that would probably be enough. Let's pray. Almighty God, we do come to you today with thankful hearts. We are thankful for all that you do for us. I'm thankful for all of the, the folks that are here gathered this morning. I thank you for, I, I thank you for this church. I thank you for Ed. I thank you for your spirit here among us, Lord. Your spirit that carries us through the rough times and the good times. Our, your spirit that just reaches out to us and loves us. Lord, thank you. In your name we pray. Amen. Would you join me now in our affirmation of faith, which is found on page 881 in the hymnal. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he descended into heaven, and seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As we go to God this morning, what do we have to be thankful for? Frank. I am first thankful that the Lord allowed me and many of the other people to be born in the United States with the freedoms that we have that are lacking in a number of other nations. Yes. Thank you. Trudy. Our daughter Andrea is driving up this starting this afternoon. She'll get here tomorrow morning. She's driving straight through with the two boys. So it's a joy and a concern. That's so right. Absolutely. And driving home on Thanksgiving. Okay. <laughs> what other joys and Thanksgivings do we have today? Very. Well, uh, our neighbor, yesterday I was talking to him in the morning, and then his wife just called us this morning. 
he, uh, they don't know exactly what happened, but anyway, he was rushed to the hospital and ended up uh, having an emergency surgery, had a brain bleed. Oh. So right now he's in the ICU with Isomer. And his name? Tom. Tom. And I'd like you to pray for Cecil's son, Eric, who's in the hospital currently after having a stroke last week. And we need to keep Cecil and his whole family in our prayers at this, at this difficult time. But you know, Cecil, I have to tell you that something that you told me the other day sticks in my head. You had 68 years of marriage. God bless, God bless you. It has, and you've been a blessing. You and Sandra have been a blessing to so many. We have other joys and concerns this morning. I think I'm the next one. So oh. it's a, a joy to have such great community to all of the families and students that I have right now who are going through loss and separations and just what their families are going through to know that we have like a great community with our church and we have a great community within the school. So knowing that some of these kids are struggling through what's going on at home, that there's supportive people around them all the time to yeah. be there. Yes. And just to know that there's so many people there to help them. That's awesome. That is, I mean, it's terrible to hear about the se separation, but you're right. The fact that they do have a good support system is awesome. Do we have other joys and concerns this morning? Oh. I, I would like to say uh, we had a son who was an alcoholic, and three and a half years ago, he hasn't had a drink since. His grandson came into this world. And uh, he had, the day he was born, he stopped drinking and hasn't had a, a drink since. <coughs> that, that is certainly a wonderful, wonderful thing to be thankful for. Grace, thank you for sharing that. Shall we go to God in prayer? Almighty God, we are thankful. We are thankful to be here this morning, and I know that I've overused that word today, but I just can't get over the fact that you do so much for us. You're with us in everything that we do and say, and Lord, we, I just pray that we can have hearts that are thankful, even in, the, in times that are difficult. Lord, help us to be thankful. Lord, I'm thankful for Cecil and his daughters being here in church. I just pray for that whole family, that you will comfort them at this difficult time and the loss of Sandra. But Lord, I am thankful that Cecil and Sandra had 68 years of marriage. Lord, what a blessing, and what a blessing Sandra has been to so many. Lord, I, I thank you that we were born in this country and, and have freedoms that people around the world just don't even, can't even begin to imagine. But Lord, I pray that our nation will turn back to you, that we will become a nation that worships you and looks to you for strength and guidance. Lord, I, I'm thankful that Andrea will be coming to visit family this this week, but I pray for her as she makes the trip up with her two boys. Please keep them safe and it, in both directions, and I pray that they have a wonderful visit. Lord, I pray for Earl and I as we'll be traveling to Massachusetts and back um, this week, and I pray for any of anyone else that's going to be traveling or has family that will be traveling. I pray that, that they will be safe. Lord, I I thank you. I thank you for all that you do for us each and every day. I pray for Tom, who has a brain bleed, for Eric, who had a stroke on Thursday. Lord, I, I, pr I pray for healing for both of those men. Lord, I, I pray for those that are dealing with cancer. I pray for a woman named Evelyn who was diagnosed with colon cancer. And Lord, I, I pray for others that, that have heard that horrible diagnosis this week. 
and I pray that you will give them the healing that they need. Lord, I, I pray, I, I'm so thankful for Grace and David's son that three and a half years ago, he, he stopped drinking when his grandson was born. And what a blessing that boy has been to that family. And Lord, I'm thankful that, that their son adopted a healthier lifestyle after, after that little one was born. Lord, I, I thank you that the children from Alicia's school have a good support system. Sometimes, sometimes I'm sure they don't know where to turn, but I'm thankful and thankful that they have a good support system. And I thank you for this church and their spirit in reaching out to others. Lord, we do come with thankful hearts today. We pray for those that are in the midst of strife. We pray for the, for the folks in the Ukraine, but we also pray for the folks in Israel and that surrounding area. We pray for an end to the conflicts there. We pray for those that have had natural disasters and, and are dealing with recovering from fire and tornado, hurricanes, floods, so many things, Lord. We, we just pray for them this morning. And Lord, I, I thank you. I thank you again for each and every person that is worshiping here, and I pray for those that were not able to make it this morning, that you will touch their hearts and they will be back with us. Almighty God, you are an awesome God, and we come to you humbly. And Lord, I, I pray that you will be with us as we pray our prayer of confession this morning. Gracious God, we squander our gifts wastefully on things that are not helpful to others. We confess that we have not always recognized the talents we have been given. develop them, and use them in ways which will offer healing and hope. In Jesus' blessed name we pray. Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As we have been blessed, let us now share our gifts. As I went down in the valley to pray, studying about the good old way, Starry crown, O oh Lord, show me the way. Oh, children, let's go down. Come on down, don't you want to go down? Oh, children, let's go down. As I went down the valley to pray, studying about the
Almighty God, Almighty God, we bring these gifts this morning. They are a token of what you have given us and how you have blessed us in your lives, in our lives. Lord, I pray that we will take these gifts and use them. Use them to spread your love, to feed the hungry. And Lord, we pray that you will use us and the gifts that you have given us to be ministers in this world. In your name we pray. Amen. Would you join me now in hymn number 77? Blessed now let us go to be a blessing to others. 
Go, bringing the news of peace and hope, of healing and love. Go, and the God of peace will go with you. Go with thanksgiving in your hearts. Amen.